Hi guys, it's Quinn here. If you enjoy my videos, consider hitting the like button. It's the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. Keep in mind this video will have plot spoilers. The Wandering Earth by Shishin Lu is a short story that takes place approximately 400 years in our future. During this time, a government agency known as the Coalition controls most of the world. Several hundred years prior to this, humanity had discovered that within a few centuries, the sun would rapidly expand into a red giant, destroying the solar system. The only option was ultimately for humanity to leave the solar system. Generational ships were considered, but even generational ships the size of cities could never house the whole of humanity indefinitely. Humanity required a much larger ecosystem to survive. Led by the Coalition, it was decided that humanity would move the Earth itself. Humanity constructed giant engines, mainly in North America and Asia. The largest of these were up to 11,000 meters or about 7 miles high. They would use these engines to move the Earth itself through the vacuum of space in a migration process that would take approximately 2,500 years. 100 human generations would pass over the course of that time. The migration would occur in five distinct stages. The first stage, breaking. The second stage, exodus. The third stage, wandering Earth 1. The fourth stage, wandering Earth 2. The final stage, the Neo-Solar Era. During the first stage, aka the breaking stage, the engines are used to stop the rotation of the Earth. The sun now only shines on one side of the planet. As a result of the engines, the surface of the planet is extremely hot, with temperatures reaching up to 176 degrees outside. Humans had to wear special cooling gear in order to not be scorched by the extreme heat. The rain was also scalding hot. The nights were also never dark due to the fact that the engines illuminated the entire northern hemisphere. The main character of the story is born during this time period. Never again were there bright days or dark nights. Mom told me what it felt like when everyone saw the last sunset. It took three days and three nights for the sun to finally disappear over the horizon. The earth had just stopped rotating. It was during that long sunset that I was born. During the second stage of the migration, Exodus, the engines are activated and use their power to begin the process of exiting the solar system. The moon is left behind. The activation of the engine's ion beams creates tsunamis and causes extreme temperature shifts on the surface. To avoid the disastrous effects on the surface, humanity moves underground to subterranean cities capable of housing a million people each. These were on every continent. The engines themselves technically weren't strong enough to push the Earth straight out of the sun's orbit. The Earth will orbit the sun 15 more times and accelerate each time. The orbit of the Earth will become more elliptical as it gets further and further away from the Sun, and eventually it will break orbit by ricocheting off the gravity of Jupiter. Thermonuclear and antimatter bombs are used to clear the asteroids of the asteroid belt out of the way, though the Earth's surface is still bombarded by some asteroids. Though at this point in human history the Sun was feared rather than worshipped or revered as a bringer of life, the lack of it started to change human society in a negative way. Earth was now a wanderer in the dark, a cosmic loner. It had left its home and was now on an uncertain journey. Even with the engines, the future of humanity and the Earth was uncertain. The planet slipped into a kind of social and spiritual dark ages. Love and art became memories of the past. Arts and philosophy classes were cut to the bare minimum, as people didn't have leisure time for them anymore. It was humanity's busiest era. Every person had an endless job to do. It was as if every religion vanished overnight. People realized that even if there was a god, he was a bastard. We still had history classes, but the stories about the anti-solar era were like myths of the Garden of Eden to us. The third stage was called Wandering Earth 1. It would last approximately 500 years, and during that time, Approximately half of Asia's mountains would be consumed by the Earth's engines as fuel. Course was set for the star Proxima Centauri, 
approximately 4.3 light years away. During this point in time, civil unrest begins to build. The populace begins to greatly mistrust the coalition. A conspiracy theory stating that the sun was not in danger of rapidly expanding began to spread. Due to this, a huge rebellion occurred against the coalition. The rebels wanted to seize control of the engines and reverse the direction of the earth. Eventually, 5,000 leaders of the government are cruelly executed. The sun was destroyed shortly after in a helium flash, transforming it into a red giant, as had been predicted centuries earlier. A rebellion which killed countless humans on both sides had been started based off of a false premise. Suddenly, a powerful white light drowned out the starlight. The people on the shore went momentarily blind. The sun had become a disk, and it was getting bigger. It was practically the center of the universe. A second later, the sun burst in a helium flash. The hundreds of thousands of people on the shore were stunned. They stood motionless, as if they had been turned to stone. They were as still as the people that had been condemned to death. The explosion lasted for a short moment. It was the last time its heat and light would ever reach the Earth. Following the sun's expansion, humanity continues its journey towards Proxima Centauri. The fourth stage was called Wandering Earth II. During this stage, the Earth began rotating again, but in the opposite direction. The Earth would eventually accelerate to one one thousandth of light speed and coast at that speed for 1,000 years. After the planet finally reaches two-thirds of the way on its journey, the engines will face the opposite direction and decelerate for 500 years. Over the course of this time, crystals of solid nitrogen oxide begin to form on the planet's surface. During the final stage, the Neo-Solar Era, Earth will anchor itself around the new star, Proxima Centauri, and become one of the planets in its star system. This will be the home of Earth and its future generations. Shishinlu has quite a few short stories. Let me know if you've read any of them in the comment section below. Alright guys, it's time for Patreon questions. Yay, I love Patreon questions. You know, I can never predict you, Organism9186. Anyway, first Patreon question. Jason asks, Are you excited for Sisterhood of Dune? I'm pretty sure you're talking about the HBO adaptation of Brian Herbert's Sisterhood of Dune book. Though I'm definitely excited to have more on-screen Dune material, I'm not the biggest fan of Brian Herbert's Dune books in particular. It seems the show is loosely based off of The Sisterhood of Dune, which is about the early days of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, and also about the Guild and the Mentats and a bunch of other stuff. I'm definitely going to try out the show when it comes out, and if it's good, then great, and if it's not, then that kind of blows, I guess. Next question. Jay asks, I'm interested in your philosophy on collecting books, particularly different editions of the same book. Well, I have like four editions of Dune, so I say just go for it. Collect as many of the same book as you like. If there's something unique about a particular binding that you like, go for it. I have multiple copies of several books in my library. Too many books if you ask me. Not enough video games. No one buys physical video games anymore, Organism9186. Anyway, last question. Ari Stormbringer says, What previously unadapted book or story would you like to see given a faithful movie or series treatment? I've gotta say, Dan Simmons' Hyperion. Hyperion is just begging for a series to be made. Now, I've covered Hyperion in several videos on this channel, so if you haven't heard of it, you can check out those videos. I just think it's a really awesome science fiction series. It's really unique, and there's nothing quite like it, and I think it would do so good given the Game of Thrones HBO treatment. And I think a lot of other people probably agree with that. And that was the last question, so we can go now. Finally, that took so long. You know, Organism, you don't have to be here. I mean, it's my YouTube channel, for crying out loud. Between demonetization and just the unstable nature of ad revenue on YouTube, and due to constant rule changes and increased censorship, 
YouTube isn't the best place for content creators. If you want to support the channel and make sure we stay afloat, consider checking out our Patreon. We've got all new perks including access to a Patreon-only channel on Discord, early access to videos, and a once a month Patreon-only livestream. Also, $10 and up patrons get a copy of the ebook and the audiobook version of my graphic novel, Tadia. We've got other perks like your name appearing in videos, and also special roles in the Discord server. And more perks to come. Check it out. Thanks guys. Just a heads up for those of you that may be interested, my next graphic novel, The Lie Behind the Star, is launching February 2023. You can sign up now to get on the email mailing list to get notified as soon as it launches. More information on my website, link in the description. Thank you guys so much.